Okay. Vance. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I already. Th this is my title. Uh, the background is this lovely image uh, that's in a paper that Chip Shear did several years ago um, on magnesium sweet samples from the, the moon. This, if you can read the details, this is a lovely uh, norite with orthopyroxene and plagioclase. Um, and it sort of sets the stage that this is an old rock and it's really fundamental with understanding some of the early stages on the moon. And what I'm going to be talking about is looking at the background and then bringing in the compositional constraints that can help us understand some of these multiple issues. This is a summary that uh, Lars Borg pr prepared a couple of years ago and it, all, it relates back to some of the things we've already talked about, namely the, the middle one which has the zircon uh, ages, which has this peak around 3.4.35, uh, um, but he, he also s looked very carefully at all the ages of different uh, uh, measurement techniques to try to sort out what really is the age sequence that we can see on the moon. Um, and if I remember my sequence right, um, a couple key things is the key characteristics of what happened and, and created and set the character of the crust happened in the first, at least the first couple of hundred million years. It was over relatively quickly and, and from there on is what we've been working with. Um, uh, you've seen these kinds of models for the evolution of the crust that we have uh, er early on we have a magma ocean, the magma ocean begins to crystallize, the first thing that forms is the, the early mantle, um, and it's not until about 70% of the magma ocean has crystallized that we start to get the plagioclase cumulates forming the upper part of the crust. All the models that you look through in the various uh, uh, literature get to this stage, namely that um, after we, we've developed the proto-mantle, um, we start the anorthocytic crust, and then what happens? Um, uh, well, we have to come back to what we have in the samples. Uh, uh, we have the zircon peak at 4.35. We have uh, now, after scrubbing some of the uh, ages of the oldest pharaoh anorthosite, we have the Mari basalt source region uh, in sort of green down at the bottom and the what's called Urcreep, namely this residual creep rich zone. They all sort of fall in, and this is again is Lars Borg's scrubbing of the issues, they all fall in this uh, 4.35 zone. So, so there is an aspect of what's happening in crustal evolution that's fundamental in all these different approaches to what happened in this early stages. So going back to our model, um, um, there's a few, is there a pointer here? I don't want to press the yeah. wrong button. <laughs> uh, Top one. Oh, the, the thing that's not marked. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, 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 basically this is essentially the same, but crystallizing the rest, there's a whole number of different models for, for how do you go from this original anorthocytic crust to the rest of the story. Um, this is one that uh, McCubin had later on and uh, a, a lot of the issues has to do with what happens to the ilmenite, what happens to the creep, and you, you see a lot of different varieties of this last uh, uh, summary. And what I want to talk about, and we've already mentioned in Noah's talk and earlier today, is that um, there's several major events that probably happened in this time period. Um, we've got a mantle overturn, probably. Uh, we've got the magnesium suite developed. We've got creep concentration. We've got a dynamo initiated. Uh, and we have basin forming events. All these sort of happened in this time frame of when we're trying to unravel this. So why am I saying all this? It's because I want to show you that we can put constraints on this looking at the composition in a global context. We can't answer all the questions, but we can certainly put constraints. So what I'm going to talk about are some of the compositional uh, uh, aspects that we see in a global scale, uh, clearly talk about the anorthosites and the, the pan and fan, uh, which are global, 
and then talk about some of the distribution of the mafic minerals. This is associated with the highland crust. I'm ignoring the Mari basalts at this point. But I'll talk about the olivine, the magnesium spinel, and the magnesium rich pyroxenes, and the distribution across the surface. And then come back with issues that it may constrain or raise uh, 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 um, uh, options for. Uh, I only have this figure of squiggly lines, and I have one more, but just to remind you that everything I'm talking about is based on the fundamental characterizations of uh, properties that are highly diagnostic, that allows you to identify crystalline plagioclase, pyroxenes with magnesium or iron-rich composition, olivines, spinels, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a basis, and for those of you who are not spectroscopists, uh, you just need to know that we, we, we use this as a basis. I'm going to start with looking at the plagioclase, which is based on this crystalline plagioclase feature, and then walk through the global distributions of each of these components. Okay, plagioclase. Um, uh, uh, early on, after the Kaguya mission and M-Cube mission uh, uh, did its initial assessment, uh, Makiko Itaki wrote an elegant breakthrough paper pointing out that this crystalline plagioclase is identified uh, globally in all these little blue spots uh, around the surface. It's based on this highly diagnostic feature of crystalline plagioclase. Uh, later, Leah Cheek uh, did a detailed study around Oriental. Uh, all of these little dots are places that have a diagnostic feature. Uh, the red ones are those that have the diagnostic feature of this crystalline plagioclase. The black uh, are those that have some mixture of plagioclase and pyroxene, only even, even 5% pyroxene. Uh, but, but it's clear that the concentration of the pure plagioclase is concentrated on the uh, inner ring of Oriental. Uh, Carrie Donaldson Hanna did a summary looking in the more global scale. Uh, here you see um, por portions of Leah's work on Oriental. Uh, there is another version in her JGR paper that you may enjoy that, that uh, identifies the character of these. Now all these little red dots are the same uh, crystalline plagioclase. She also included the, what we call the featureless plagioclase, which means there's no diagnostic features of in a high albedo material, and those are all the little black dots. So again, the key point here is that we have plagioclase um, uh, is global, it's well exposed at basin rims, and in, in particular because of the oriental uh, inner ring, we know it is a massive uh, crustal layer. So there's no question that the global distribution and the massive character of this anorthosite is well documented. Okay, well let's move on to other aspects. Um, way back in ancient history, we knew from telescopic measurements that the central peaks of Copernicus has a beautiful olivine band. Um, with the original Kageya data, uh, Yamamoto mapped out the distribution of where we see these features across the surface. I'd like to come back to the, the um, uh, Olivine from Copernicus, though, there's a, a paper that I love that uh, Ursula Marvin and Walker did um, uh, in the early days looking at a troctolite, plagioclase um, olivine, um, in a, a soil that was believed to be a ray from uh, Copernicus. And around the olivine grains were these melted zones. Um, and they showed experimentally that the only way you can get this texture is by a rapid heating and melting and rapid quenching. Um, just exactly the sorts of things that you would expect for uh, something that comes from this place and is excavated by the crater Copernicus and, and deposited Apollo 12. So, and the composition is FO89 and anorthosite uh, 95, just exactly what we expect from our troclites. Beautiful, elegant. So we, we, we have a distribution of the olivine. The olivine is associated with, with um, uh, environments where there's plagioclase. It doesn't have the massive outcrop that we see with, with uh, anorthosite, but it is global in distribution. So olivine, or this troctolite, and I contend that pretty much all the olivine we see is troctolite, 
occurs as a local component in association with plagioclase in diverse locations across, but it's missing an SPA, the deepest, biggest basin we have. Okay, let's move on. Um, uh, spinel, I mean, he's in spinel, and is Tab here? Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, okay. I misspelled his name, and so it, <laughs> I, I'm very embarrassed. I was looking at this morning. It's, it's, okay, it's correct in the next talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is the the, the magnesium spinel is is um, very diagnostic. Um, has none of the the uh, mafic minerals that we see with olivine and pyroxene, but this enormous. Uh, strong spinel feature that has another feature at longer wavelengths. So you have to have this sort of little bump that you see in, in, in uh, many, in all of the, the diagnostic uh, distributions. These are where we've seen uh, the magnesium spinel. It's associated in a variety of areas, including basin rings, but also in various dispersed areas in the debris from uh, major impacts. So, and, and Tab will tell you about how it's uh, formed and or, or, or the origin, but okay, okay. Magnesium spinel is global, but occurs as a minor component along uh, basin rings with feldspathic megaregolith. Um, and the last uh, mineral that I'd like to talk about is uh, pyroxene. Um, this is a harder one because pyroxene is everywhere. Uh, Paul Lucy and his group did a really elegant analysis recently where they looked at all the small craters, you know, the one kilometer craters, and evaluated the diagnostic features of, of pyroxenes. Um, and the key for that is where you see this band minimum. The shorter bands are more magnesium rich, the large, longer wavelength bands are more iron and calcium rich. So, do you know which? What are these two lithologies that this suite of materials comes out? Well, it's what you would expect, namely. The highlands are this peak with the low calcium, magnesium-rich pyroxenes, and of course the mare basalts are this high calcium pyroxenes. Uh, in addition, they, they looked at the distribution within South Pole Aiken and the feldspathic highlands. Uh, they had to scale it because the statistics are small here. But both of these, feldspathic highlands and SPA, fall in this, this main peak. Uh, SPA might be even a little, little more um, uh, iron rich. It's, it's hard to be sure. So anyway, this is an elegant distribution of the, the magnesium rich pyroxenes are pervasive in the, the uh, mega regolith of the highlands. Okay, and I'm essentially done with the overview. Magnesium. Principle, okay, ba ba. I just said that. Okay, summary. Pan, the global uh, anorthosite, is exposed. This uh, uh, is a massive layer. Um, olivine troctolite occurs as a local component association with plagioclase in diverse areas, often at basin rings, but it's, yes, it, it's missing in SPA. Magnesium spinel is global, um, but occurs as a minor component, and magnesium rich pyroxene is global and is the principal mafic component in the feldspathic highlands mega regolith. Okay, well what does, what constraints does this? And here's my, my summary of what I think this helps us to try to unravel this sequence. The, magne the, the magma ocean accumulates, the plagioclase, it's, it's closed. It's, it, magma ocean, uh, Plagioclase is well documented. Okay, the olivine plagioclase. Now this is a, f uh, a magnesium rich olivine. Um, it is associated with near basins and, and in order to have the magnesium rich uh, component um, suggest, does not prove, but certainly suggest there's some issue with the mantle overturn which of course has the most magnesium rich component of the early cumulants. Uh, the second component is, is also possibly associated with magne mantle overturn. Namely, you, get, you need to have the magnesium sweet liquids uh, interacting with the anorthositic crust. So both of these components suggest there, there had to be a mantle overturn in association with some of the character of what we see today. 
The noritic and orthocyte branches, which is everywhere across the highland crust in the mega regolith, that has been what's been excavated by these big basins and redistributed across the surface. Excavated by the, what has the basins excavated, where they've excavated the lower crust, in SPA's case perhaps even to the mantle. And, and what you get is noritic and orthocyte. Um, so the lack of exposed olive in SPA suggests that either none of the basins have excavated mantle material or the lunar upper mantle below the anorthosite crust is dominated by low calcium, magnesium rich pyroxenes. Okay, implications for crustal evolution. We've confirmed the magma ocean, mantle overturn may be a requirement for some of these uh, observations in a global scale. The exposures of, and redistribution of the lower crust by mantle is what creates the noritic breaches across the, the mega regolith, uh, and the composition of the lower crust and upper mantle is dominated by magnesium-rich pyroxene with minor components of olivine and magnesium spell. That's it. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> I don't want to kill anybody here. Okay, Carly, I want to just float a tease out there. I have found beautiful outcrops of troctolite within the SPA basin, and I'm not going to tell you where. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, we know where, right? Troctolite. Troctolite. We, we've got a north side here, but I, I, no, I, I have outcrops of troctolite inside the SPA basin, and it's been submitted. I don't know what the reviewers well, are going to say there about is it. Some at Yes. Is that the same place? Yes. Can you use the microphone? <laughs> but Schroeder is, uh, okay. It's within the SBA basin. <laughs> and I have to say, the outcrops are truly spectacular. That's great. I mean, okay. they okay. are. Okay, good, good, good. good. Hope good. you suggested us. Them. Hope you suggested some of us as reviewers. That sounds really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Carly, could you please get closer to the microphone? Can you, can you use the microphone, please, Carly? I think what? that's... Oh, yes. Um, did, so, did SPA cause mantle overturn in the moon? You expect me to answer that. You're supposed to answer that. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. No. Well, well, actually, I don't know. We've got SPA. We've got mantle overturn. We've got um, uh, all these things that are happening at the same time, and we've got to get them in. Yeah, I don't know how to unravel that. that that's why it's. That's the difficult one, right? So we'll take the one minute and a half at the end of the thing for discussion, and Carly will think about that and then answer it at that time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>